We continue now at the top of Daf Ayin Hamud Beis and Maseches Yivamis. This is Yivamis Daf seventy five B. The Gemara is in the middle of a story of an individual who climbed on a palm tree. V'charze silo bebeitzim. Rashi over here says it means v'charze bebeitzim nikvu coats bebeitzim. There was a thorn there and it pierced. It caused a hole in his testicles. V'nafak mine put the mugla v'olid. Rashi over here says v'nafak mine shechva zera shechva zera spilled out of him. Kechut the mugla kemin lecha. It was like a pus. V'afilu hachi olid basar hachi. That's what it means. And nevertheless, he gave birth. We said on the previous summit that that would be considered a Petsua Daka who's forbidden to enter the community. Implication being that the person's not able to father children. And here we have a story of an individual who was able to father children. And the Gemara says, no, it's not a proof. Hashalach Shmuel Akame de Rav. Shmuel actually sent this story in front of Rav Yomar Le, and Rav said to him, Save a of go and inspect after his children. May I and him? You got to find out where they came from. As Rashi over here says, Zinsa Ishto, Rav was saying most likely his wife committed adultery. It's not really possible that he fathered any children. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rav Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, Pitsua Daka Bidei Shamayim Kosher. If you have a Pitsua Daka that happens by the hand of heaven, it's still going to be Kosher. Rashi over here says, Bidei Shamayim Al Yedei Re'emim Uvarad O Mimei Imo, means to say it came through, uh, through hell or it came from the womb. In other words, the point is it was something that happened at the hand of heaven. That person is still going to be Kosher to enter the community. And the Gemara says, Amar Rava Rava says, Hainu de Karinan Petsua, Velo Karinan Hapatsua. That's why it says the language of Petsua, and it doesn't say Hapatsua. Rashi over here says, Yavaksiv Hapatsua, Havi Mashma Hapatsua, Me Ikaro, Kagon Me Imo. If it would have said Hapatsua, it would even be including someone who's a Petsua Daka from the womb, from the time he was born, but it doesn't say that. It says Petsua Daka, the point being that it happens through some kind of injury. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rav Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, Petsua Daka Bidei Shamasher. If a person is a Petsua Daka at the hands of heaven, that is going to be kosher. The idea being it happens by an illness, or let's say maybe it happens already from the womb, from the time of birth, that's not going to be a problem. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rav Rav says, Hainu de Karinan Petsua, Velo Karinan Hapatsua. That's why the Pesach says Petsua Daka. It doesn't say Hapatsua. Rashi over here says, Yav Aksiv Hapatsua, Have Mashma Hapatsua Meikaro. That would imply that it was from originally, meaning from when he was born, Kagon Mimei. That's if it would have said Hapatsua, but it says Petsua. The idea is that there's some kind of injury that takes place. That's what causes the person to become a Petsua Daka. And the Gemara continues, Bimas Nisa taught, and the Brice it was taught, Namar lo yavo pitsua. Pasuk says, lo yavo pitsua, again by pitsua daka. Vinamar, and the Pasuk uses the same language, lo yavo mamzer, talks about the fact that a mamzer is not allowed to marry into the community. So mala halan, bidayadam, just like over there, it happened through a person. In other words, a person becomes a mamzer because of the actions of human beings. Afkan bidayadam, so too over here by pitsua daka, it has to be something that happens uh, through the actions of people, meaning to say it has to be some kind of a wound, etc. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava Rava says, Pitsua Bekulon, Dach Bekulon, Kurus Bekulon. It doesn't matter if there's a wound by all of them. All of them here means to say, it doesn't matter if it's the testicles, it doesn't matter if it's the aver itself, it doesn't matter if it's the cords. In any of those situations, if it's wounded, if it's Dach, meaning to say if it's crushed, or if it's Krus, meaning to say if it's severed, any of those body parts that happens to, that's going to be a problem. And the Gemara explains, Pitsua Bekulon means to say, Bein Shenifza Hagid, Bein Shenifza Beitzim, Bein it doesn't matter if the actual aver is going to be wounded. It doesn't matter if the testicles are. It doesn't make a difference if it is the cords of the testicles. And similarly, Again, it doesn't matter what was crushed, whether it's the gid, whether it's the beitzim, or whether it's the chute beitzim. And also, cross bakulan. Let's say it's severed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was the gid that was severed. It doesn't matter if it was the beitzim. That were severed. It doesn't make a difference if it was the cords that were severed. In all of these cases, it's going to be a problem. And the Gemara continues. One of the Rabbonin said to Rava, How do you know that the when the Torah uses the phrase Petsua Daka, it's talking about that area? It's talking about the Emame Rosho, maybe the word Petsua Daka, if there's a wound, it's talking about the person that is wounded. How do you know what part of the body it's talking about? So Amar Le, so he said to him, Midolomona be Doros. It's because there are no generations of Tsuadaka, meaning it doesn't say that there are several generations of Tsuadaka that are Usr, whereas it does say that by other prohibitions. So Shmamina ba oso makam. So you see the issue of Tsuadaka is in that aver, meaning it's in the area where you father children. And the idea is there are no further generations. This person cannot have children. That's why it doesn't talk about generations. 
But the Gemara says, what's the proof? Maybe the reason why it doesn't enumerate generations is because their loch is relevant to the other generations. Or maybe he himself, the Petsuadaka, is Osir. Maybe it is talking about someone who can have children, and his son and his grandson would be kosher. And so the Gemara says, Dumya de Khrushchevcha. No, the reason we know Petsuadak is talking about by that Aver is because Khrushchevcha is talking about that Aver. Ma Khrushchevcha bioso makam, ma fainami bioso makam. Just like Khrushchevcha is talking about the Aver, so too Petsuadak. The Gemara says, U Khrushchevcha gufe mi mai, tev oso makamu. But also Khrushchevcha. How do you know that's talking about that Aver? Ema mi sufase. Maybe we're talking about there's something that happens, there's, uh, there's, so, there's something is severed by the lips. That's also an area, there's liquid that comes out, Shafcha, something pours out. Out. So therefore, how do you know it's talking about the Aver? And the Gemara says, no, Shavcha Ksiv, it says the word Shavcha, B'makam Shashofech, it has to be that it's actually pouring out, and we don't say that, let's say, spit that comes out of a person's mouth, that's not called Shofech. And the Gemara says, V'yema mechotma. okay, so maybe from the person's nose, there you do say that it could be Shofech. But the Gemara says, no, Miksiv B'Shafoch, Kruz Shavcha Ksiv, it doesn't say something that is always pouring out, it's saying something that pours out when it's severed. Meaning to say, Misha al yidei krisa shofech. It has to be a part of the body. Something is severed, it's going to pour out. Shalo al yidei krisa ain't no shofech. But if you didn't, if it wasn't severed, it wouldn't pour. El mikaleach. Rather, what would be called is mikaleach. It like spurts out. Le'afuk hai. That's different than the nose. The idi v'idi shofechu. By the nose, it's always shofech. And so therefore, that's how we know that Khrushchevcha is talking about that. And the Gemara continues, B'mas nisa ta'an, and the b'raise it was taught, Nemar lo yovo p'tsuadaka v'nem yovo mamzer. It says the same language by p'tsuadaka as it does by a mamzer. It says yovo mamzer. Malahalan bo so makam. The same idea, just like by a mamzer, what place, the adultery, or whatever illicit relationship took place involved that particular area. Afkan bo so makam. So to when it talks p'tsuadaka, it involves that particular area of the body. And the Gemara continues, Nikev lamata me'atara, let's say the hole, it begins below the atara, that's b- below the corona. Shekenegdo lamala me'atara, but then it goes up above the area. Now, the area below is usually considered okay if there's a hole over there, but the area above is considered to be a problem. So, Savar, Rebbe Chia Barab, Alach Shuri, so Rebbe Chia thought that would be fine because the hole begins lamata me'atara. And the Gemara says, Amr le Rabbi Asi, Rabbi Asi said to him, Hachi Amr Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, so says Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Atara kol shi ma'kevis. In any situation, if it happens by the Atara, that's going to be ma'akev, because that does prevent the person from being able to father children. And Rashi over here says, Nikev lamata me'atara, if the hole is below Atara, besofa get klape karka, means it happens at the end of the aver towards the ground, away from the body. Behole chaneke balachson, but then the hole goes in a diagonal direction, v'yotze kenegdo lamala min Atara, klape aguf, and the hole actually comes comes out of the other side, it's actually above the Atara, more towards the body, which is a problem. So he thought to say, overall, Lachshuri, that that's kosher. Ho'el ve'in shnei rosh ha'nekev l'malem Atara, since both holes are not both above the Atara. Techol l'matem Atara, basar bi'almo, like we've said before, anything that's l'matem Atara, just basar bi'almo, is just considered flesh, it's not a problem. Kedekhtani ma'asnisen, im nishtayir min ho'atara, malay achot kosher. We said even if there's a small amount that still remains from below the Atara, that's still going to be okay. Atara gavoa ha'makefes v'yus ha'ged, we said already the Atara, it's kind of like the crown, it's that corona area that circles around the aver. Kol shu, any amount, kevan shanek of over derech al penei chol ha'atara, afilu nek of kol shu, makeves told us who If you have any hole in this way, if it happens in that area, even the smallest hole is going to hold the person back from be, being able to have children, and therefore he's going to be posel. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Vim nishtayre me'atara v'chulu, if there's even a hair's breadth of the corona that remains, so then we say, okay. And the Gemara says, Yosef Ravina v'kami boy, Le Ravina was sitting and he asked the following question. Malay ha'chut shamru, this hair's breadth that we're talking about, al pnei kula, does that mean of the entire circumference? Or al pnei rubor, just the majority of the circumference? The Gemara says, Amr le Rava Tosva, the Ravina Rava Tosva said to Ravina, Mole hachut al pnei ruba. When we talk about the hair's breadth that remains, it has to be on, along the majority. Uklap e it has to be the part that remains, has to be more towards the body, not the part that's more further away from the body. Rashi over here says, Uchlape reigns litzad gufo nishtayir mole hasar al pnei rov hakefa. The hair's breath has to be remaining towards the body, again, on the majority of the circumference. Avalim nechtucha klape haguf, but if the if it's cut in the area that's more towards the body, minishtayir mole hachut min ha'atar al pnei hekef kol hagid b'tzida klape karka, and the only part of the atar that remains is a little bit along, around the circumference, but it's more in the area towards the ground, so then posel, meaning away from the body, so then posel, so then that's going to be that's going to be a problem. 
And the Gemara continues, Amar Ravuna Ravuna says, Kekul mis kashera. Let's say the aver is cut, but it's cut like a quill, it's still going to be kashera. But Kemarzev, if it's cut like a gutter, so then psula, it's going to be psula. We'll see Rashi about how he describes how this is cut. And the reasoning Ravuna gives is, Hai shalit bo'avira, v'hai lo shalit bo'avira. In one case, the air is going to go in there, it's going to cool things off, and therefore it's going to be a problem. But in the case where it's like a kol mis, it's kashera, because the avir, uh, the air is not going to enter, and it's not going to cool things off. And the Gemara continues, Rav Chista, Amar Rav Chista says, Kemar zev kshayr, the other way around. If it's cut like a gutter, it's kosher. Kekolmas pasula, but if it's cut like a kolmas, if it's like a quill, then it's going to be pasula. And the reason he gives is high guarded, high low guard. In one case, if it's cut like a quill, so then it's very thin. The aver is going to be very thin. It's not going to rub when they have intercourse, and therefore it's going to be problematic for him to have children. But in the case of the marzev, it's going to rub, and therefore it's going to be okay. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava, Kavasi de Ravuna Mistab, where Rava says it makes more sense like Ravuna, Hailo Shalit Boavira, Vahai Shalit Boavira, because again, in one case there's no air going in, in the other case there's air going in, it's going to cool it off. And Imi Shum Grey Dusan, if you're worried about the fact that there's no rubbing, there is rubbing, Midi de Havi Abarza de Chavis, it's like the stopper you put in a barrel, even though at the top it doesn't, there's no friction, but there can be friction uh, further below, and the same thing is true over here. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Ravina le Mareimar. Ravina said to Mareimar, Hachi Amar Marzutra, Mishmei de Rapapa. This is what Marzutra said in the name of Rapapa. Hilchasa, the halacha is Bain, Kekol mis Bain Kemarzev. It doesn't matter if it's cut like a quill or like a gutter. Kesheira, it's going to be kosher. Miu mi boile. But nevertheless, our question is like this. Lamatame atara lamala. What are we even talking about here? Are we talking about where it's cut above the atara, or b- below the atara, or above the atara? And the Gemara says, no, pshita de lamala me'atara. Obviously, this whole discussion is, is that it's being cut above the atara. It's being cut above the crown. Because if it's below the atara, below the corona. So we already said, even if the whole aver is cut over there, even if the whole thing is severed off, it's still going to be okay. So obviously, this entire discussion is where we're talking about where there's a cut, which usually is a problem. But again, we're discussing in a situation, if it's like kolmus or if it's like marzev, maybe that's going to be be okay. And Rashi over here explains kikulmis like a quill, kechitoch kulmis. That means it's cut like a quill. Shemechatchin es chudo balachson lichtovba. By a quill, you cut a sharp edge and a diagonal in order to write with it. And that's again, that's what happened to the aver. And kemarzev means shenechka chesil. And that means it's like almost dug out like a pipe. Vieshlo defanos mi base stadim. You have walls only on two sides. Vachkak meemsa. But in the middle, it's hollow. Kemensino like a pipe. That would be kemarzev. And so the Gemara said, Kemarzev shalit ba'avira. Marzev is a problem because the air is going to go in there. Haruach nichnas l'socha defanos. The wind, the air goes between the walls. Umiskar hadin and hagin, and therefore the aver becomes cooled off. L'socha on the inside. Vein hazera mispashal. So the seed is not going to be able to get hot, so to speak. He's not going to be able to have children in that fashion. But if it's like a quill, the air doesn't get in there. It doesn't get into the gid. And then the zera is able to get warm in the, uh, in the proper fashion in order to have children. And the other opinion was high guard. In one case, it's rubbing. Kemarzev gorid shichva zerem and aguf b'shas tashmish at the time of the intercourse. So you're going to have a rubbing over there. It's going to it's going to rub to the body. Umazri, it's going to be able to cause it to have children. Sharei lo nechzar hagid meyoviv. The point is that in that case, the thickness of the aver is not, has not been diminished. Venogeya betzide harechem therefore touches the sides of the womb. Umeschav emotzi viyor kachets therefore it can heat up and again it can he's able to uh, he's able to have children and that fashion. The high low guard kekolmus, but in the case where it's cut like a quill, it's not going to rub. Al yedeshen nechzarov if the thickness is missing over there. Ve'ena nogea because le'erechem ve'ena mischamim kol kach it's not a mischamim ve'ena nimshach mitoch agov bekiluach eloshose. So therefore, you're going to have a problem. In that case, it's just going to drip out. It's not going to shoot like an arrow in the proper fashion. And then he said, So he said, you don't have to worry. That was talking about uh, the statement, uh, that was talking about the statement of Rava saying that Rav Huna makes more sense because we're not worried about the rubbing, just like we find by the stop of a barrel. What does that mean? That also is something that's kind of narrow, thin on the inside. It doesn't touch the walls of the whole of the Chavis. When he puts it inside there, it gets to the thicker part. So then it does touch. So, kach, so the same thing is true over here. Even though the front of it might not touch, but the back of it touches, not a problem. And the Gemara over here continues. We just said above 
that the one question that we have, this is what Ravina said to Mareimar, he said the one question we have is, that what are we talking about? Is it caught Lamatsa Meator Lamala? The Gemara said, Isn't it so obvious? What kind of question is he asking Mareimar? Of course it's Lamala, because Lamata is not a problem at all. And so the Gemara concludes, Veravina le Shabushe le Mareimar Hudaba. You're right, it is obvious. There's no reason to ask this question. Obviously, the whole question is talking about Lamala Meatara, but Ravina was just trying to test Mareimar, and that's why he asked this question. And the Gemara continues, There was a story in Masa Mechasi, Rashi over here says, where a person where it was cut like a gutter. And so in order to fix the problem, so Shafye Mar Baravashi Kakomis, Ravashi actually cut away the flesh to make it like a quill viachshare. And then he said that that person was kosher to enter the uh, to enter the community. Rashi says, Shafya Khata Khabasum, he called Sad, he cut the flesh from all the sides. Vinata Dofane Marziv, he he actually took away the walls of the gutter. Vyaso Kakomis and he made the aver that it was like a quill viachshare, and then he said it was kosher, uh, like the opinion of Ravhuna. And the Gemara continues, Ahuvda, there was a case as follows. The Havid Pumbadisa, it happened in Pumbadisa. Estatim guvsa de Sheikh Vazera viapik b'makom ketanim. The Gemara understands in terms of the anatomy that there are two holes uh, at the at the aver, and one of them is Sheikh Vazera comes out, and the other one is where the urine comes out. Now, the Chazanish comments that uh, maybe it was Nishtana Hatever or some other thing, but nowadays we don't see this. Nowadays there's only one hole. But in any case, in the Gemara's, in the Gemara's understanding, there are two of them. So the case in Pumbadisa was, was that the area where the Sheikh Vazera comes out, that was closed off, and the Sheikh Vazera was coming out of the same area where the urine comes out. So, Savar, Abbevi Barabai, Lachshur, Abbevi Barabai thought that should be kosher, that shouldn't be a problem. Rashi over here says, Ketanim, again, Meir Aglaim is the urine. Lachshur, Shara, Inkan, Lo Pitzua, Velo Dach, Velo Karas. He saw it's fine. There's nothing here that's wounded, there's nothing crushed, there's nothing severed. It's just coming out of the wrong hole. So, Abbevi Barabai thought that that would be okay. Amar of Papi, Rav Papi says, Mishum Asu, because of the fact that he comes from, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, and Daf Ayin Vav Amad Aleph.